good feeling, isn't it? It's almost stress relieving. Talk amongst yourselves, I'll be with you in a bit. with bubble wrap, why can't it work with marbles too? Hi, I'm Luke from the Broken Meeple and this is another expansion review for a game that has been in my top 100 since its release. Not stupidly high in the top 100, in the bottom half, but it's still a game I really enjoy and I've enjoyed teaching it to gamers or non-gamers who are just big giant fans of Candy Crush and all those types of Facebook games that they've always been so obsessed with. The game I'm referring to is Potion Explosion. And this one was basically, like I said, Candy Crush the board game. You effectively dropped marbles into this dispenser unit and you were brewing potions. And in order to brew the potions, you had to collect different colors of marbles. And you did this by removing the marble from the dispenser so that the marbles fell down. And if you ever got marbles of the same color to collide, they caused an explosion and you took those marbles out. And the idea was, was that you were setting up chain reactions that allowed you to get lots of marbles so you could brew your potions quicker. When you brewed the potions, you got to drink them and get really cool special abilities. And basically you carried on and on and on and saw how many points everybody got, as is the way. Quite a really cool game and certainly a good gateway level game that does make you think. Well now we have an overdue expansion for this game and that is the fifth ingredient, just aptly titled the fifth ingredient. This is a modular expansion, although to be honest most of this expansion you will literally just shuffle into the base game and just leave it at that, but this incorporates four main new elements. The first of which is, funny enough, the fifth ingredient. All the other marbles before were different colours and they were pretty much the same thing, it was just different colours. Here, you now have a white marble, which is a wild marble, so it counts as whatever colour you need it to. These are very powerful, there's not as many of these in the game at any one time, but you can set up some insane chain reactions by using the wilds to your advantage. You've also got some new potions that can be shuffled into the base game, and you'll still choose the same amount of potions per game, but now you've got four new types of potions, some of which use expansion modules from this, and some of which don't. I think it's like two that use the module from here and two that you could just happily play with the base game. Like I say, they're cool. What's wrong with more potions at the end of the day? A third module that this adds is the Ghastly Cauldron. Now the Ghastly Cauldron is basically kind of like a supplement to those white marbles that I mentioned before. It comes onto the board filled with the white marbles and some professors and some potions will allow you to exchange marbles from your hand or from your tableau to the Ghastly Cauldron. So effectively you swap them out and in doing so you'll earn some extra victory points on top of that as well. Very easy, doesn't require much teaching, you can just throw it into this game no problem. And finally, the module, The Professors. Now this one is mostly a hit, but there is a miss in there as well. It depends how much you take this game seriously, really. Now what these do is that they add game-changing mechanics to the way the game plays out. And some of them will be constant abilities, some of them will be things that every player can trigger. Okay, cool. You know, game-changing powers, that's always a good thing. I believe you have six Professors in total, five of which are cool to use. One of which isn't depending on your perspective. Now I know that this game is to be taken lightly, it's a light gateway game, but one thing I don't like in games is where it forces you to be silly or introduces some rather silly rule that shouldn't be there. And one of the professors does this. Most of them will add things like if you are able to get eight marbles out at one time you get to do something with the ghastly cauldron, you know, things like that. Another one which I quite like is where you have to build the potion from the bottom layer up that's quite cool because that's actually a bit more thematic, you know, when you pour potion, you don't do the top layer first, you know, you do it from the bottom up. That's quite cool and adds a nice little challenge. Also forces you to focus on specific colours. Really like that one. But there's one in there which says, if you let a marble touch the table, 
you get a scolding token. And scolding token is the opposite of these plus one victory points. It's basically a negative point. But that's all it is. If you drop a marble on the table as opposed to your potion or board, you lose a point. Yeah, you know what? If you like that, fine. If you want to include it, fine. I'll play with it if it's requested. But that just takes this game to a weird level when you're playing with this silly, almost party-esque rule. Because this isn't a party game. It's a light gateway game, but it's not a party game. So why do we have weird professors like that? Thankfully, there's only one professor that fits that bill, though. The other five are still pretty solid. So I basically just shuffle those five and deal from them. And you can use more than one. It advises that you don't, and I advise that you don't, particularly if you're teaching new players. But, you know, when you've got experienced players with this, you could use one, two, or multiple of these abilities just to cause complete chaos. And that's pretty much all that this expansion has. If anything, it's slightly underwhelming how much it has. Because, yeah, it's four modules. But for the most part, it's more of the good stuff. And what's new is pretty straightforward. I mean, the fifth ingredient, the wild ingredient, that could have been in the base game. And probably should have been. It's such a simple include and such a simple rule. It counts as a colour you need it to count for. That's pretty much it. The Ghastly Cauldron is basically just a holding pot. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't give you any negatives or bonuses. It just has certain potion effects and certain professor effects that say exchange marbles with the Ghastly Cauldron. That's literally all it is. The professors themselves are probably the highlight of this expansion because they have those cool game-changing mechanics, except for that stupid one about the table. And the potions, there's four new types. You can mix and match. Two of them require the Ghastly Cauldron, but then, like I said, it's so simple to include, you might as well just chuck it in and use those potions. So, on the whole, it is a good expansion. It adds more of the good stuff. And I will give it props that it doesn't add too much complexity. or well, sorry, any more complexity. Potion Explosion is good that it's a simple game with some cool sort of potion mechanics. I didn't want them to make this too gamey and take it out of the gateway category. But thankfully, this one is so simple to include that you can teach this with the base game, no trouble whatsoever. At most, maybe you might just forego using a professor tile, but pretty much the professor tiles are not that complex. So I would throw one professor in, maybe one of the simpler ones, throw in the wild marbles because it helps new players to kind of get out of a almost like a tight squeeze, you know, they think, oh, I can't do much with that. Oh wait, a wild marble's in there, great, I can use that. Or when you're filling up potions, um, having the wild marble basically allows you to get past when you, you know, times when you're stuck. I'm like, oh, I really need a blue marble, and oh, I've got a wild one, great, I'll shove that in there. So I suppose it does help new players a tad. Um, the Ghastly Cauldron is just a, a placeholder, so nothing much there. And new potions, they're not particularly complex, you could mix and match those to your heart's content. So... On the whole, it's a good expansion. More of the good stuff, with one or two extra mechanics, not too complex. I was kind of expecting a little bit more though, because I feel that everything in this expansion could have just simply been in the base game. You know, they're so, they're so uncomplicated that you think that the base game could have literally had this from the start, and yet you've got to pay more money for this, which is a nice cool box, I'll give it that, which you can then promptly just go, and drop it away because actually I better get it back because you're going to want to see what it is. There you go. Yeah. Actually, well, here's another problem. Remember the base game and that cool insert? Well, I say cool. It was a functional insert. The dispenser was in like one half of it, and then the potions slotted nicely on their side in another part, and then the marbles in a bag went in this full cubby hole. It was perfect, it held the box fine, you know, it held the sorry dispenser and everything else fine. Good functional insert. Yeah, kiss that goodbye when you include this expansion. Because you now have two choices. You either keep this box and store the expansion elements in here. Well, that's just more space on the shelf. And that's annoying. I hate it when it does, so I never do that. So instead, you have to hold it in the base game. And then you end up with something like this. Yeah, not the best way, is it? 
the dispenser sits in there, but then you've got to have this loose on top. You've got the potions, which you could put in bags, but then you've got to spend ages getting them out of bags. So basically they just float around loose in there. The marbles, you know, they're not even in here yet. You know, they've got to be stashed over there. So everything fits in this box, but not exactly in a nice, neat package unless you are willing to bag up all the types of potions in separate bags, which you can do, that's perfectly fine. I just don't feel like I want to open, what was it, like six to eight bags full of potions every time I play this game. Of course, I suppose the flip side of that is because I don't bag them up, I have to sort through all the potions and find the individual ones. So I suppose, maybe I will bag them up. I don't know, food for four, how do you guys do it? But what I'm saying is, is that you are going to have to kiss that insert goodbye because this will not fit into that insert at all. No way. I don't know. It's not physically possible, I don't think. Unless maybe you're tucking them underneath or some weird stuff. But yeah, you're pretty much saying goodbye to it. So a bit of an annoyance with the storage solution, particularly as pretty much everything in this box could have easily just been in the base game. But it sounds like I'm being negative. And yeah, maybe one or two points, I think, from a, de sorry, a design and publishing perspective, I am being a little bit negative. But is the expansion worth getting? Yes, it's a solid expansion and adds some cool new features that aren't overly complex, but, you know, there's only so much there. It's obviously more outlay money-wise, and I would certainly say it's not a must-buy, if I'm going to put it that way. If you enjoy Potion Explosion and get it to the table often, I think you will get this expansion and I think you will enjoy it. There's good things to have here. You can integrate it into the base game when teaching. Happy days. But it is not essential at all. I would happily pay Potion Explosion without any of the modules that are in this expansion. So it's good, not essential. That's pretty much what I can say about it. So that's all I'm really going to talk about with Potion Explosion. I feel I give it a personal rating of, I would say, 8. That's me personally, because I think it's solid. And I like it, and I'm going to use all the components in here. I just wish maybe the publisher had thought a bit more about how to store the game later, and I still ask why most of this stuff wasn't really in the base game. And I was kind of expecting maybe a bit more, you know, something a little bit more impactful on the way the game played. But, like I say, still solid, just not perfect, and not essential. So, that's it for me. I'm off to go brew some potions and drink a few of them myself might have a problem. So I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. Take care. Happy brewing.